popo masa ke hele ma masa ke popo shte ke hele ma masa dia heavenly father we want to say thank you for this beautiful day lord we choose to rejoice and we choose to be glad in this beautiful day i just want us to go to god today and begin to thank him i want to thank him for a beautiful day another day that he has made and this is a day that he made for a purpose and we are called into this purpose and so i just want you to say father thank you that i'm alive and well today it means there is a mission for me there's an assignment for me there is something you want me to be doing and i want to say thank you for counting me worthy to be part of the millions of people on on the billions of people even on earth that i'm part of them i am not insignificant i know there's a reason there is a purpose for which i have been created i know there is a reason i'm alive today and i want to say thank you for the privilege oh god i want to thank you oh god you over that lord that i'm inscribed upon the palms of your hands i know i've been chosen by you i want to thank you because i'm the apple of your eyes I want to thank you O oh Lord you over because you have a thought concerning me thought of good and not of evil to give me a future and a hope I bless and exalt your name I want to thank God for that which he has done in your life something you can know specifically not everything just remember one thing I want you to recall just one thing that the Lord has done in your life just one thing just one thing and i want you to thank him for it i want him to feel your gratitude and so i don't want you to pay him a lip service i want you to genuinely say father i appreciate you for this thing that you have done in my life and i give you praise for it i give you glory i give you honor i give you adoration in the mighty name of jesus I also want you to thank God for that which you're believing God for. I want you to thank him like he already did it. And so just faith calls those things that be not as though the were. I want you to bless the name of the Lord. Let your blessing today be the substance of things that you're hoping for. Let your praise today be an evidence of things that you have not seen. I just thank him for that which you he has done already and i want you to put up an attitude like he did it already lord we just thank you lord we glorify your name oma shekeli le momo santo robo bos santoria maraki as santo robo bos santoria la baba santoria oba shtaka hara baba santeria la masse de li baba shekeya father we thank you lord we give you all the praise mm. Lord, we thank you, Lord. I give you all the honor. I give you adoration, oh God. I glorify your name because of that which you have done already. Lord, thank you, oh God, for your people. I thank you for listening years, oh God. I want to thank you, oh God, for the spirit of understanding that you've given to us. I give you all the praise, oh God. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I also want to thank you for one thank God for one more thing. Thank God for your disappointment. Thank God because there was a particular thing you were expecting that did not come to pass. I want you to be bold enough to say thank you. Lord, I thank you because there's a reason I did not enter into that miracle. There's a reason that you didn't permit that desire to come through. And I want you to thank him knowing that he has you on his mind and he wants to keep you in the way he wants to keep you in the path that he is destined for you and so i want to say thank you lord if it's a job rejection i want to say thank you if it's a one closed door seemingly closed door i want to say father i want to thank you if there is you know one disappointment or the other i want to just say thank you lord i give you all the praise i give you all honor because you you deemed it worthy for me not to receive that which i wanted because you have a reason you have a purpose for my life and i give you all the honor and i give you all adoration for this in jesus name we have prayed 
We're going to be praying one of my favorite, favorite, favorite Proverbs. It's Proverbs chapter 16. I love Proverbs 16 so much. I'm sure I've preached Proverbs 16 like a hundred times. But before then, I want us to open our Bibles to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 18. Very, very important. 2 Chronicles chapter 18. Some of us may have heard this story, but I want us to read it together. So I don't want it to just... Um, Listen, I want you to read it so you understand it very well because it's seem a bit controversial. Amen. The Bible says now Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah, the chosen people, the king of Judah. Now Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor, and he made marriage alliance with Ahab. Ahab is a king of Israel. Judah used to be part of Israel and they had to go their separate ways because of a certain prophecy when Israel began to you know act up and so God was like okay so this is what I'm going to do. So Jehoshaphat the king of Judah and Ahab the king of Israel they were in-laws and Ahab killed an abundance of sheep and oxen for him and for the people who were with him and induced him to go up against Ramah Gilead. And you have to be very, very, very careful when someone, especially someone that is not in alliance with God, begins to favor you, your spiritual ears antenna needs to go up why is this person doing this the bible said that king of Ahab, you know prepared a large feast when king joseph had visited and he now asked him you need to go to battle with me he wanted him to fight a battle with him he said well, you need to go against ramon gilead Verse 3, Ahab, king of Israel, said to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramah Gilead? And he answered him, I am as you are, my people as your people. We will be with you in the war. Now listen to what Jehoshaphat said. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Inquire first for the word of the Lord. Inquire first. Inquire first. Let's not go into this battle without asking God. I know that your mind is set on going to fight. But let's know what to do. What does God have to say about this war? Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, 400 men. And said to them, Shall we go to battle against Ramoth Gilead? Or shall I refrain? And they said, Go up, for God will give it into the hand of the king. As you will read later, this is a very scary thing. You know, have you, have you heard people tell you to do so, certain stuff? There are certain things they tell you to do. Eventually, you go do it. And it doesn't turn out so well. And you say, but it was a man of God that told me. It was a woman of God that told me. The prophets told him, you can go and you are going to win the battle. Verse 7, thank God for the Spirit of God. And the king of Israel said to Joseph, at, verse 7, there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord. When Jehoshaphat felt, what are all these people saying the same thing? He did not have a peace in a spirit. And so he asked the king of Israel, is there, are these all the prophets you have? And he said, there is yet one man. I, but I just don't like that guy. He doesn't speak in my favor. There is yet one man of whom we may inquire of the Lord, my Kyre, the son of Himmler, but I hate him, for he never prophesies 
good concerning me, but always evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. Now the king of Israel and Joseph and the king of Judah were sitting on their thrones, arrayed in their robes, and they were sitting at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenana, made for himself horns of iron and said, Thus says the Lord, With theirs you shall push the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so and said, Go up to Ramon Gilead and triumph. The Lord will give it into the hand of the king. Verse 12, And the messenger who went to summon Micaiah said to him, Listen to this, Behold, the words of the prophets with one accord are favorable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them and speak favorably. You have to be careful not to act based about in the multitude of counsel. There is safety, yes, but at the end of the day, you are the one to make the decision. Your decision should be made by the witness of the spirit inside of you and that's why it's so important for you to build up yourself on your most holy faith so you can be discerning it doesn't matter who is speaking to you and you will, you will see it in a moment now they told Micaiah, the only prophet that was not with the 400 prophets, that see, the 400 prophets, they have said one thing. You better say the same thing. Now, when it comes to God, it's, it's, there is no democracy. There is no opinion of the masses. Most of the time, what God wants you to do usually doesn't align with the wisdom of man. And that's why you need, that's why we are praying every morning. Because you need God himself to order your steps. You need to hear the word of the Lord. The Bible speaking in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, it, it, uh, I think it's from verse 2. It says, in those days God spoke through the mouth of the prophets. But today he speaks through. Through his son, which is the word of God. That is not to say you should despise prophecies. Prophecies are legit. They're still, the, they're still prophets of God. But you need to develop your own self. You need to have word of God. So you can always have a witness in the spirit. It's not everything that prophets tell you, pastors tell you, apostles tell you, bishops tell you. That is the right thing. That doesn't mean they are not sent by God but it's not all the time and you will see in the moment why these prophets were prophesying the same thing now they are telling Micaiah you better say the same thing because you know don't 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 put yourself in a bind you better say what people want you to say we want people who say things we want to hear if you're always going to people who will say things you want to hear, have a rethink today. Go ask people who may not be so nice and rob your ego and say things you want to say. People will tell you the truth. A lot of people run away from pastors and leaders and mentors who are blunt, who will say it the way it is. For your destiny and for your life, don't run away from people like that. People like Micaiah. Verse 13, but Micaiah said, as the Lord lives, what my God says, that will I speak. And when he had come to the king, see, the king said to him, Micaiah, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I refrain? And he answered, Go up and triumph. They will be given into your hand, because that was what he told him to do. Say what he wants to hear. But the king said to him, 15, 
How many times? We're reading 2 Chronicles chapter 18. How many times shall I make you swear that you speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Even though he hates him, the king knows that when Micaiah opens his mouth, he's speaking from the depth of the heart of God. Verse 16, and he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains and sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his home in peace. 17. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he will not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? And Micaiah said, Listen to this. Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. And all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who will entice Ahab, the king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said one thing and another said one thing. Now I need you to understand. When these prophets were prophesying, they were actually prophesying what they were told. And Micaiah said, I saw God and I saw the hosts around him on the left and on the right. And God asked them, it was an assembly. They called a meeting because of the king of Israel in particular. And God said, I'm laying a trap for this guy is the messing up who is going to convince him to go into battle so he can go there and die i fear god so sometimes there are certain things you're going through that is not a binding of the devil that you need sometimes you need to go to god and repent and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I don't know where this is coming from. There are times that we go through situations that are orchestrated by what we have done. And we need to repent. But there are times it's a spiritual warfare. Everything is a spiritual warfare because when you start doing acting up and you're doing things you shouldn't be doing, the enemy is the one that is making you do whatever you're doing so it's still the enemy but the way you pray is going to be different right you're not going to be saying the name of jesus oh lord those doors that are closed open them satan i rebuke you no that'll be very different because you may be the one closing those doors by yourself and there are times that is the devil outrightly that is trying to sabotage you at that time, you, that's when you need to begin to come against rulers of darkness of this world, principalities and powers. That is when that warfare goes in that direction. But there are times that it's God. You know when God says, I'll rebuke the virus for your sake, when you pay your tithes and you pay your offering, I will, that is, I, will, I will stop them from attacking you. Now, you can bind God. In this situation, it was God that called the host and said, how do we get rid of this guy? Verse 20, very crucial. 2 Chronicles 18. Then a spirit came forward. Now, this spirit is also there in the assembly. And stood before the Lord saying, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, by what means will you entice him? See? And he said, I will go out and I will be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, you are to entice him and you shall succeed. God gave the lion spirit a backing. Go and entice him and you will succeed. Go out and do so. 
Now therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these prophets. The Lord has declared disaster concerning you. You need to finish up the scripture that I love, Second Chronicles 18. It will amaze you of what God is able to do or is capable of doing. He said, I'm the Lord. I create good and I create evil. So it's better you run into God. Submit unto God. Resist the devil, he will flee. You have to submit first to God so that God can take care of the rest. Don't mess with God. Don't joke with God. Fear God. He is God. He's able, he's capable of doing any. Sometimes I'm in certain situation and I'm asked to pray about certain things and I'm groaning in the spirit because I can perceive this is not the devil doing whatever is happening. It's not good, it's not comfortable, but it's not the devil. And that will take us to the Proverbs of the day. Proverbs chapter 16. The Bible says the plans of the heart belong to man. Verse 1. But the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. And let me stay here. The plans of Ahab was in his heart. The answer is from God. If you care to know what God has to say about the plan, God is not about changing the plan. So don't wait and say he will change it anyways. Why make a plan? Let God do whatever he wants to do. God wants you to be a planned person. And I don't know what your plan is, your vision for the year, your vision for the week, your vision for the day. God wants you to make plans. Don't join the wagon of people that are folding their hands and they think God is going to do everything. God isn't going to do everything. But he wants you to commit the plans to him because he is the one that is going to order your steps. The plan of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. I love the way Amplified Version puts that, that, that scripture. It says here, verse 2, say, roll your works upon the Lord. Commit and trust them wholly to him. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. Do you understand that? And so shall your plans be established and succeed. You have a plan. You're praying about it. It's so that God can align your plan with his will. But you've got to make a plan. Do you have a plan today? We're going to be praying today. That plan you have, we're lifting it up before God. I always admonish people, don't plan from your head. Write down your plan. I have what I do every day is on a board. I have my goal for the year is on another board. But what I do daily are things that discipline me, that will move me a little bit closer to that which I am you know, aspiring to have at the end of the year, I have a number of, I mean, words I'm supposed to be writing for my, for my dissertation. And I know I can't wait until the last minute. So I have the number of words I need to write. I know I have to learn a particular language. So I dedicate like 10 minutes to that language. I have an instrument I'm trying to learn. So I dedicate 10 minutes to that instrument. That's how you do it. But what I do is sometimes I don't get to do everything. I commit it to God's hands and he orders my steps. The Bible says, 
Commit your work, verse 3, and your plans will be established. Verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That is to say, God knows you have an enemy and sometimes you are the enemy of you. And God says, if you'll just please me, and what I want you to do is commit everything to me. And when you're praying to God, be willing to hear, wait or stop or don't go that route if you don't have that in your mind if you're praying with the mindset of i'm still going to do it anyways that's going to be a there's going to be a problem there because what will happen is a lion spirit will get into you and you'll be deceived to go in. have you seen you know you going to all out to do certain things and it, it just flops and you say, I prayed about it. No, you didn't pray about it. You went and informed God what you want to do. And you said in Jesus' name, Amen, without hearing back from God. You didn't get a feedback. Because you went with a mindset. Like some of us are here today. You're saying, no, 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 you're talking too much. Just, just go ahead and let's pray. Let's just pray. That's all I want. I just want to pray. I am speaking to you by the Spirit of God so you do not get in, enter the trap of a lying spirit. That thing you're about to do, I want you to look deep into your spirit. Is God asking you to do it? What are your motives? Why do you want to do it? What is behind those plans? The project you are banking on right now, why are you doing it? If you cannot give a reason immediately, you need to go back to the drawing board and go and ask yourself the question, why am I even doing this? God, are you in this? Verse 9, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord orders his steps. I want you to go to God in prayer. We're just praying two prayer points. Father, in the name of Jesus, align my heart to your will. Lord, I want you to align my heart to your will. So anything I do, everything I say, wherever I go, will be in line with your will and your purpose in the name of Jesus. Align my heart to your will today in the name of Jesus. Lord Jehovah, I know I have the mind of Christ. Lord, I come this morning to activate the mind of Christ that I already have in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I do not want to go except you go with me. I'm trusting you with all my heart today, Lord. I want you to align my will, oh God, Father Lord, to your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Align my heart to your will in the name of Jesus. Let my will, oh God, Jehovah, be your own will. Thy will be done on earth, oh God, as it is done in heaven in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your purpose, let your power, Lord, let your will be done in my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, take me away, oh God, Jehovah, from the route that you have not ordained in the name of Jesus, Lord. Keep me in the path that you've ordained for me in Jesus' name, I pray. The second prayer point, the Bible says if you'll be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. I want you to pray for yourself. Lord, I pray for a willingness and an obedience spirit in the name of Jesus. The Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. I, Lord, I want to be obedient to your word. I want to be obedient to your will in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, keep me in the path, oh God, Jehovah. Father, Lord, that you want me on in Jesus' name because I know that when my way pleases you, you will cause even my enemies to be at peace with me, oh God. Lord, I do not want to go on a path where I will begin to struggle and I will begin to fight, oh God, physically in the name of Jesus. I want to be on the path that even if I know it's hard, I will know you are there with me in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, I don't want to be in a boat, Lord, that you are not in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Keep me, Father Lord, where you want me to be. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. I want you to just pray one more, one more. Very important. The Spirit of God is telling me. The Bible says, Blesses the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And ungodly is not 
that they are unbelievers. When you hear the words that are not of God, it's an ungodly word. It's a lie. If it's not in line with the will of God, it's a lie. I want you to pray today that everyone that is around me that has a great influence on me, but they are not leading me in the right path. Lord, cut that association. Dissolve it in the blood, in the mighty name of Jesus. You may not know who the person is. The person may be very good to you. The person may be very nice to you. But somewhere in your heart, whatever they say to you is like a law. You just want to do it. Either because you respect them so much or you want to make them happy. I want you to ask God. Whatever way God is going to do it. If it's a spouse, I'm not going to tell you, oh, leave your spouse. But I want you to get to a point where the spirit of the Lord is so strong in your spirit that those words will not make an impact on your soul. And so I want you to pray that prayer genuinely and say, Father, every word of man that has held me hostage, I pray, oh God, Jehovah, that you will release me in the name of Jesus. And Lord, Father, every counsel that is around me, Father, that is not leading me aright, oh God, Lord, I want you, oh God, to dissolve the relationship. Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, that every stronghold of every word that I've heard, that has kept me where I am today my God and my father I destroy those strongholds in the mighty name of Jesus every relationship that is not ordained by you father in the name of Jesus release me from that relationship in the mighty name of Jesus every lying spirit I destroy you in Jesus name I come against every lying spirit in my life and the life of everyone under the the sound of my voice uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I destroy their impact in your life uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I set you free from every deceitfulness uh, of liars in the name of Jesus. Uh, you are free today in Jesus' name. We have prayed. Uh, amen and amen. The Bible says faith without works is dead. I want you to watch out. Whenever you are listening to people now, I want you to listen not just with your ears, but with the ears of your spirit and be very discerning. In the name of Jesus, you will not fall into the trap of the enemy. You will fall even into the trap of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, you will see help. You will receive help from men. Men that God has sent your way. Every door that God did not open in the name of Jesus, they are closing back today. It may look very, very you know, enticing and appealing, but if it's not God, that door will close in the name of Jesus. And God will open that door that you're meant to go through. God will bring men your way that will speak life into your spirit. God will you know, connect you with people that are meant to be in your life in the name of Jesus. And your ears shall be open to the voice of truth. Your ears shall be open to the voice of God. Your heart will receive the instruction of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, our affirmation is, I have the mind of Christ and I understand the things of the Spirit. Say it over and over. I have the mind of Christ and understand the things of the Spirit. I have the mind of Christ and understand the things of the Spirit. I have the mind of Christ and understand the things of the Spirit. I have the mind of Christ and understand the things of the Spirit. I have the mind of Christ and understand the things of the Spirit. In Jesus' name. I want to remind us, if you have not registered for the finance, personal finance uh, management, seminar that is coming up on Sunday, February the 19th by 2 p.m. Central Time. I want you to please go and register. Go to pform.org slash three week. We give to the Lord and pform. You want to give to the Lord, just go to pform.org slash give and just give to the Lord. You want to know more about services, go to pform.org slash services. And I pray that God will keep you in the path of his righteousness for his name's sake. Remember to pray for me just one minute every day. And by the way, I'm Reverend Volufolake Ike and I'm the senior pastor of PFOM, Positive Influence Family Outreach Ministry. We worship here in person 
at 8502 Cambridge Street, Houston, Texas, 77054. Please be around the Word of God. And that's what we do in PFOM. We walk the Word and the Word of God works for us pray for me one minute that god will keep me god will keep my family god will keep my children in the path of righteousness for his name's sake and i know the lord will lift you beyond your imagination in jesus name we have prayed amen and amen